Welcome to the Gracie Academy. Hedon Gracie, Henry Gracie. 1993, our father created the UFC to showcase the effectiveness of Jiu Jitsu to the world. Now that every professional fighter has added it to their arsenal, breaking down how they're using it so you can add it to yours. You guys, sorry about the delay. We, we didn't watch the UFC. We didn't see it live, my friends. We did not see it live. We were, we were busy. busy. We had a big seminar, like 300 plus women here at the academy for a women empowered kickoff seminar. It was off the hook. Do you see the light bulbs going off? Here. The girl, the, the mind, oh, the exposure to Jiu Jitsu. The, I didn't notice the light bulbs here. No, the light, light bulbs in here, bro. <laughs> did you feel that? Yeah, I felt it's that. It's so incredible, you know, to be in a room with, you know, 300 students who've never been exposed to the art, show them one or two, three, four, five techniques, and they just boom. And they realize that even though they're women, that 100% possible for them to learn the gentle yeah, art. Jiu Jitsu is for everybody. Dang, that's why we do the Gracie no, breakdowns. Sense. Ladies, women empowered, guys, check this out. So we were, after this, the, after the, the weekend of fights, we kept getting Facebook, text messages, tweets, you know, all kind of messaging uh, you could imagine, saying, yo, you gotta break down this, you gotta break down that. And then one guy was like, man, you gotta break down the Paul Harris leg lock. You gotta break down the Paul Harris leg lock, Paul Harris. And I'm thinking, dang, Paul Harris? Did, did you search Paul leg Harris? In Brazil? On YouTube, he's searching Paul Harris. Someone said break down the Paul Harris leg lock. And I'm like, man, must be nasty because this guy sounds super excited about it, but what is he talking about? And then I made the connection. What was the connection? Paul Harris is Palladis, is his last name. <laughs> and I guess when they commentated, yeah, when you said it, when you got, uh, Paul, Paul, they say yeah. Polaris? When they're like, Polaris, Polaris, Polaris. Polaris. In Portuguese, but Palladis, so it's a little bit more boom. And uh, so he thought it was Paul Harris, but it wasn't. You guys, <laughs> incredible leg lock, devastating leg lock. This guy pulled guard in the UFC, went to butterfly guard, lifted, elevated, isolated, wrap, blue belt strike two, master cycle, chapter five leg locks, and uh, went for the butterfly guard. So that he went for the double leg, but he didn't even really do that for the double leg. He just shot in to engage with the legs. So as he engaged, boom, the guy swallowed a little bit. He sat down and pulled his hook in right here, but he made sure the connection was strong so that the stickiness of his hook would engage. And then from here, he shot the bottom leg through, and then he did a very common foot isolation strategy with one butterfly hook in. He basically uses the hook and the hands to throw the person north, east, and then he brings, rotate, and then he brings this leg. After throwing this around, he starts to isolate here. And at this point, this leg started to come out as well. And at first, his, his opponent, Mike, was, was coming towards him. But then Mike realized that once the isolation begins, the only other option is to run away. What he tried to do, what he would have liked to have done, is just kind of hold his leg out. Very common. And, and uh, because it's so slippery, it, it makes sense. Yes. That it can happen sometimes. It's a great, it's a great escape, just kind of run away, turn and run. The problem is, Paul Harris, Baladish, who's the amazing leg lock master that he is, he knows that. And, and anybody who does leg locks often knows that anytime you isolate, there's, it's, there's a, a, a mix of emotions that are happening. At first, he don't keep your knee on the ground. The way Mike Masenzio did, put this leg up, he tried to keep the knee stuff for his life. The problem is, Pilate is uh, so good at lifting, elevating with the hook and using his hands, that you, once your knee comes off the ground, red lights start flashing for this person. So Pilate's got him up, the knee comes up. And at that point, he goes from trying to stay stuffed to the ground, which is the right thing to do, to stay close, that's the correct counter, to trying to run away. The problem is Pilates also knows that pattern of events. So when you go to run, turn, go ahead, this heel stuck right here. And this arm. This one. And this right here, because let's say you didn't have this that yes. good, my foot can come out, yes. and then now my leg can go straight. Yes. But the fact is that the leg is bent. Yes. And the and bent I'm, leg cannot slip straight out. So oh, boom. It's straight. And he has such strong little stumpy legs like Joe Rogan said, it looks like he stuffs softballs in his calves. So the guy's trying to run away and squeezing with his leg. Finally they roll on this side and that's when he starts to wrap it up. So Palada's initial concern wasn't even the heel hook. No. It was just the lock of the leg. And then once yeah. it's stagnated, he starts to find the heel and now it gets in serious danger at this point. And then he was able to even lock the triangle on his feet over here. And once he left the triangle over here, he was basically had full upper leg control, my friends. And if you control the upper leg, guess what? You control the lower leg. And if you control the lower leg, you got the heel, and it's game over. So it was this pressure on the thigh that made it very troublesome for uh, Masenzio to try to run away from this now, okay? And, uh, and it was magnificent. So he squeezed here, he had it, he ripped it away here, and uh, fortunately he let go in time. Masenzio will be okay. Question is what to do, and the answer is here, it's too late. 
the heel hook is too devastating of a submission. And for those who aren't very clear on what was happening there, the heel hook, you hook the heel with your wrist, okay? You go palm to palm, and you're twisting here, and you're twisting the tibia and the fibula bones inside here so that you either break somewhere along here, depends what gives first, or you rotate the tibial plateau on the knee itself and the rotation of that in the knee is what causes tears to different ligaments in the knee. So it depends what is weaker. Like a Kimura, like we saw with uh, Nogueira and Mir, mm -hmm. when Mir broke his arm, that's technically a shoulder lock, but the problem is the, the, the bone here, the, the, uh, the humerus bone gave before the shoulder, but he's still, it's targeting this, but it breaks here. So you can't really tell until the moment happens where it's gonna break. So boom, isolation, knee was down and boom. So now, the knee being down, was the right thing. here is good, but it's, there's almost a, like why was this knee on the floor for? Did he put it on the floor? He's got, oh yeah, for sure, but Vicenzio knew, get that knee stuck. He, he put long, it down. But then the problem is, Polaris was too good at getting the legs and getting him off. And not only that, but when you put your body this close, you are easier to move. That's so interesting. a part of me almost thinks that, go ahead, shoot through. Like, Sorry, go ahead. Rotate, nice. rotate. Like of not letting the foot land yes. and staying away. And this foot shooting around in the first place, problems are already starting. So maybe shoot your foot inside. Hold on, stop. Yes. Yeah. But he of pulled course, guard. he pulled guard, he pulled guard. So, so it's yeah. gonna be here. You can't let the foot land on the hip. I wouldn't even put my foot on yes, the ground. This is very nice. I think I gotta stay up. You have to respect the crossover leg. Because as soon as the leg crosses the border here, that's an exposed heel. Because it starts to turn your knee, and the turning of the knee exposes it. So you can't let them so turn your knee, knee in. Knee on the ground or leg standing, this can cross the border. Yes. It's gonna be bad news. Yeah, so fighting that knee, keeping it out. But uh, dang, so much respect. It was and so serious. You would think that with him pulling guard, he'd be punched in the face, and he, he probably can. Yes. And he probably banks on that. He probably wants the top person to attempt to punch him because now their focus is clearly His distance. It's not distance, close, which allows you to bring your leg around. Oh, yeah, legs for days right here. Um, yeah, respect, so serious. So there's no easy solution except for understanding what makes the leg lock work better than the person applying it. And that clearly wasn't the case here. So Masenzio really had no chance once he went. To the leg with conviction, he wrapped it up. Done deal. Victor Brafford? Beautiful. Dang. I guess 12, 13, 14 pounds lower weight. I guess Anthony Johnson came in super heavy on the weight. Um, for whatever reason, I guess he had his excuses. But moral of the story was a good fight. Victor Brafford was able to neutralize some takedowns. Anthony's a great wrestler, but some great sprawls. He got put on his back a few times and was able to weather out the ground and pound with some good punch block series protection from the guard. And then the referee stood them up quite quickly. Um, I noticed. Anyways, they went back down. He finally was able to sprawl, and towards the end of the first round, um, Anthony Johnson was, was getting gassed, and Victor still had some, some fire, and he used it. So he sprawled one of the double legs, and he ended up in this situation right here. He ran up and he grabbed this neck right here to neutralize the double leg, and he was punching. I don't know if he was thinking of it, but he surely looked set up for it, for this three-quarter Nelson tilt right here that he could have used to shoot him down and lock that. It looked like he was setting it up. He didn't ever go for it, but that's the grip he had right there. Either that or possibly to shoot all the way through and catch the, the Dars choke here, but uh, maybe he didn't want to risk the position. But either way, he had this, a couple punches, and then he ran around, boom. Then he finally got some hooks in right here, and that's when Anthony laid this hip down right here, boom, and started to turn and face like this. So Vita Brefo was going for the choke initially, but he didn't have it because Anthony was turning his back. And this was a great example to many, it looked like a basic rear naked choke, but what was most magnificent was Anthony Johnson has been choked many times in his life. And he knows well that if you give your back, you get choked. So as, as Vita was going for the choke, he kept turning this way to face. That's when Vita realized that I'm not going to finish the choke from the side here. So he started hitting from here, boom, lift your hand a little higher, and then he went underneath, boom, boom. That's when the guy started turning belly down. Boom, boom. So by using punches from the front side, he forced Anthony to protect himself by turning in, and that finally got up to his knees. He put the other hook in, and that's when Victor was able to shoot, get this hand and flatten him out, belly down, boom, and then close the deal from there. Palm to palm was how he finished it. Probably because the gloves get so bulky, it's hard to close, so this gives great leverage. And then when he did this one, he didn't just pull here, he literally thrusted his hips and arched up and pulled with his whole body. So he was like arching the whole thing up, giving great hip pressure, and it, it of course exaggerated squeeze on the arteries. He could probably feel that there was no need to even lock it up. Yeah. He was so tired, just palm to palm, little squeeze. 
It was very cool though, because the truth is when, he, when Anthony started turning sideways and the, the angle of the choke was lost, I was pretty convinced that he was going to continue turning and facing, but Vitor knew that if I can just hit him from the front right here and force him to protect his face by rolling into the punches and go belly down, which is not what you want to do when you're being punched. Right. What can you do if you have one hook in and you have, you're starting to punch me right here. Right? Oh. Is that the answer to oh. turn face down? Probably not. What would you or do? Or is it to keep turning and going out? You start bringing your knees in, start going for an elbow yeah. stick. But he's a wrestler. It wasn't his it wasn't his instinct to do that. Correct. But yeah. you, you don't want to turn away from the person. It's, yeah. it's, everybody that's does it. You want to stay facing the punches and block them and take three. Dang, that's a great and example. In the guard. That's a great example of when the fight when the things are going very badly and you're in a bad situation like that, the reflex for a wrestler is to go to their belly. Even in just wrestling, pure wrestling, it's just go to your knees and elbows and then try to kind of build the house from there and get back to your feet. Where the reflex for a jiu-jitsu guy right there would be to turn and start to get their legs in the party and get more distance management than trying to get up. Um, not that many jiu-jitsu guys haven't gone to their knees in that same situation and tried to get up. Oh, yeah. And not that many wrestlers haven't learned the ability to turn in and bring their legs in the party. But it's just funny how when you're exhausted and, 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 and everything's going wrong, and you know you're getting punched in the face. How you really just go to what you're, what you've been doing since you were six, seven, eight years old. And uh, and for Anthony Johnson, we know that that was more wrestling than jujitsu. And I like that Victor Belfort went for the rear naked choke and not the darts, because it's people around the world see that it's more recognizable than the darts. You know what I'm saying? So it's like he went. For the, he was, he on the, was he on the jujitsu educational conquest? Correct. Dang. I think so. Victor, welcome back. So Put that black belt to use, my bro. <laughs> Very good, you guys. Great night of fights, and of course the Jose Aldo. Uh, knee, dang. What, what was the magnificence of that? that There's this, this ability to, you know, touch something and already anticipate that they're gonna lift their arm up and you spin for the arm lock. You guys, it's like as soon as the grip broke, he just knew that that could happen. Watch and the fight again. Knee in the air. It's, it, it's almost as if he wasn't even looking. He didn't even see Chad Mendez shooting before he delivered the knee. In other words, the, the knee, he just delivered it. And then Chad just ran right into it, but he knew Chad was gonna go for his leg. That's a very common thing, though. When someone slips out of a well, ring, he didn't know all of he knew just in case. Well, he knew Chad Mendes was Chad was a wrestler, and he knew that he was slipping away from the rear clinch. Yes. And normally, when you slip away from a rear clinch, you you fight the grips, you break the hands, you clear the hips. As you turn, one of the most common responses is to shoot you for the double leg. So Jose is doing his homework, my friends, in Rio in the middle of the night. There he is, keeping it real on the highest level. And uh, incredible, incredible knee, but even more spectacular than the knee was his celebration. He ran out into the people, you know? And yeah. uh, that was very Brazil. That was very, uh, very cool. Very cool. All right, you guys. So, Gracie, break down the last one. Who won it? Michael Murphy from Buffalo, New York. We said anybody who signs up for Gracie University creates a free profile and joins the university family from, I guess it was December 11th until the Brock Lesnar Overeem fight um, is entered to win. The, the next uh, Gracie giveaway, and it was two hoodies, two t-shirts, Gracie juice bag, license plate, a bunch of stuff, car decal. I mean, it was we went all the way with that one. And full Gracie Combatives online access from white to blue belt through Gracie University. Michael Murphy, congratulations, bro. You got it. How about the Brock Lesnar? That kick to the ribs, right? Yeah. We didn't even break that down. With that kick to the stomach, though? Yeah, the Brock Lesnar kicks in the ribs, and I think that uh, with the Brock situation, you know, once I after the fight, he said, yes, if, I'm, if I lose tonight, I knew I was going to retire because Brock Lesnar retired. If I lose tonight, I was going to retire. And when you have that mindset that if I lose tonight, I'm going to retire, you're, you're already lose. retired. You know, you, I mean, it, it made sense. The fight made sense after you heard his interview towards the end. And it does, it's not better or worse. It's just factual. And, uh, and it's, just, it's just what it is. So, you guys, the next Gracie giveaway. You know, give him a breakdown. Give them a breakdown. So these are our new geese. Pearl Weave, Series 1, you guys. It's, uh, it's pretty. Know, a lot of nice blue patches everywhere. And we know some of you guys out there don't train gi. But you should start. Yes. I have some MMA friends that I hear are training a lot of gi now. Yes. Because imagine if you are able to escape anybody's side mount when you're wearing a gi. Right. Imagine if you could defend all gi submissions, escape all gi controls. When you remove the gi, You'll be yes. unstoppable. Yes. So it's very important. So what's the question to get this new pearl weave? Yes. Pearl weave gi. But side note, 
I wish I had my mouthpiece to show you guys, but it has an insertable mouthpiece pocket right here. You know what's wild is last week, I found one of your geese and your mouthpiece was in it. <laughs> and you, it went in the laundry and it washed with the mouthpiece in it and then Duh. I put it in your locker for you. Free wash. Yeah, it's cool. So the question is, um, we just filmed a music video for Holic's new album, Gina Gee, and we filmed at an MMA gym so in we the area. The second, we, uh, from the video we, in the area. We, we don't know if it's the second or third video, but we filmed it in the area. At the song is Never Back Down. Never Back Down. If you haven't seen it, check it out on iTunes. Holly Gracie, Gene Gee is the name of the album. So the question is, which MMA gym did we use to film the video? It's a famous MMA gym and it's not in California. Name the MMA gym, post a comment with that answer if you have it or you think you know it. Um, number two, favorite this video. And number three, subscribe to the Gracie Breakdown channel and you're entered to win new pearl weave. And even if you don't train gi, you can wear this to the, to the shopping mall, you know what I'm saying? You can wear it to bed, it's very comfortable, great mobility, all angles. Mask, you wear it on the house. Oh, by the fireplace. Cool. Keep it real. Thanks guys.